Hi, I'm Lindsay Craig. I'm here with UHN News on the streets of downtown Toronto, and we're here to find out what people know about concussions. Also weighing in is UHN concussion expert Dr. Charles Tatter and TSN analyst and former CFLer Matt Dunnigan. Question one. How many symptoms are needed to diagnose a concussion? That's a good one. Uh, I would think three. Nausea, there's something with eye reflex and dizziness. Could be one. Headache, dizziness, blackout. I should know this because <laughs> I'm a skateboarder. And the answer is one. You only need one symptom to call it a concussion. Uh, and it doesn't matter if it's headaches or dizziness or uh, nausea. If you get a blow to the head or a blow to another part of the body and you have that one persisting symptom, that is a concussion. Question two. Who's more susceptible to concussions, men or women? Uh... Um, I would say it's there's no gender bias. Men seems the obvious answer, but maybe women because their the bone density is too is lower. Um, I wouldn't think either. I think equal. I don't know. Women are more susceptible to concussions than men are. Experts uh, are agreeing that women may be more susceptible due to the unequal neck strength that a man may have. Men's necks are the more stable, so to speak. And there's probably some women out there that would differ with that, but um, it is proven and believed that um, men do have uh, a stronger necks, which may prevent the whiplash effect and the jiggling in the brain. Question three. Does wearing a helmet prevent a concussion? Yes. 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 No. Helmets do not prevent concussions. They can protect you from catastrophic brain injuries, but they're not going to protect you from sustaining a concussion. Helmets don't stop that accelerated rotation, which is the jiggling of the brain and the slamming of the brain into your skull but they are useful in just about everything that you're doing out there, so please wear them and be smart about it. Question four. Have experts identified the part of the brain where a concussion occurs? Probably not, no. Uh, I would say I don't know. I would say no. Yes. You would think that we knew exactly where in the brain a concussion happens, but that is not the case. We actually don't know. Question five. True or false? Genetics play a role in concussions. I have to say true. I think that's true. I say false. True? False. We do suspect that there is a genetic factor underlying the susceptibility to concussion and also how long it takes to recover from concussion. But we have not identified which gene is involved. If we could discover then that, then we could have a clue as to why some families, for example, have more than one member of that family who have had significant concussions and have been very slow to recover. Question six. Who takes the longest to recover from a concussion? A child, an adolescent, or an adult? I'd say child. Adults. I would say adolescent, but I'm not sure why. <laughs> uh, recent research does indicate that adolescents, kids 13 to 16, do have more severe symptoms and a more difficult time dealing with the, uh, with the effects of a concussion. Question seven. Can an x-ray or CT scan diagnose a concussion? Um, I think so. I don't think so. No, it can't diagnose it. A CT scan can, I think. One of the big problems in our field is the fact that x-rays and CAT scans and even fancy new MRIs cannot diagnose concussion. The only way to diagnose it is through a knowledgeable examiner like a physician and a compliant patient. Question eight. Are concussions only caused by direct impact to the head? Yes, I would think so. 
Yes. No, I think uh, any sort of long-term vibration will do it too, right? It's whatever makes the brain move around in the cerebrum or whatever. An individual does not need to lose consciousness or to take a direct blow to the head to suffer a concussion. You can sustain a blow to the chest area, and which causes enough impact for your brain to jiggle inside of your skull, and which is all the impact necessary that experts believe to cause concussions and the damage to your brain. Question nine. What's the only proven treatment for concussions? Rest. Bed rest? Rest? Um, I don't know. We have only one treatment, and that is rest. We have known for probably 10 years or so that physical rest was important, but it's not even that long ago that we discovered that cognitive rest or mental rest is also important. Question 10. True or false? You can only get a concussion by playing a sport or being involved in physical activity. False? False. I would say that is true. No, you don't have to play sports to sustain a concussion. Concussions can occur in all different types of age groups and working environments. At home, you can fall. At work, you can, you can be um, involved in, in some type of accident involving your head. Concussions um, come in all different shapes and sizes and environments, so you don't have to uh, be in sports to sustain a concussion. Hemets do not. Hemets. 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 <laughs> <laughs>